Good morning my friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Belinda here and you're watching Visualized NZ. It's Trashcraft Tuesday time and I've got this sweet little project here that I hope you really enjoy. I'm going to be making little stamp sampler booklets that you could pop in a happy mail, you could tuck into a journal in a pocket, uh, give them to friends or just have them on hand to tear out one of the stamped images and use it in your creating. So I'm using a little box is what I'm using. You could use any box. It could be a cereal box, a cracker box, uh, any cardstock. You could use scraps of cardstock that you've got left over from a project. Uh, but I was at hus my husband's work and they had a bunch of these that they were putting into recycling. So I grabbed one while I was there and just started playing around with it and came up with some ideas. So then I went back into the recycling bin and grabbed a bunch more. I didn't go overboard. I grabbed like half a dozen or so because uh, I can get a number of these out of one of these small boxes. So they've all been collapsed, broken down. Um, so just to give you an idea of the size of them, so the, that's the bottom there and then the top. So the, they're just little boxes, you know, cute little boxes. Um, so white on the outside, plain brown on the inside. But if you've got something that's patterned, it's absolutely fine because we're going to be collaging it. And then we also need some paper for the inside. I'm using some coffee dyed paper. You could use other scraps that you can stamp on and see the image. And then just making a little booklet where each page is a little stamped image of whatever you choose. It could be an eclectic mix. It could be themed. So for this one, I've done all my little bottles. And so you can remove a page and take it out and use it in a project. Or you could make it into a proper little booklet and have it like full of sayings or something, you know, that's designed to be intact. But my idea for this is that you take it apart and use it. So I've sewn it together with a little bit of embroidery thread and a three hole pamphlet stitch. Again, you wouldn't need to do that. You could staple it or just tie it around the top with a bit of string or elastic, however. And if you want to post it, and it's a little bit thick, because by the time you've got your pages in, you know, it has got a little bit of thickness, then you can just flatten it out and post it like that. Okay. And then I've decorated the front. Sound like an idea? Well, let's get into it, and I'll show you how I made them. So I'm going to start from scratch with my wee box. Um, I do have some other bases prepared, but I wanted you to be able to see... So first off, where the join is, we're going to just open it out there. And we're going to cut all the tabs off because we don't want the tabs. Not for this project. Some of them I will save and some I won't. So this bit I'm going to bin because you can't keep everything. As much as I try. My house is exploding and so I cannot keep everything. So I've got to make a judgment call on what is actually useful. Now, I have kept these in the past, but I still have some, so I'm going to bin that. But I'm going to keep this bit because this bit is useful. Uh, it does have little slits in there, so I'm going to come in a bit from the fold. So I'm trimming off those little cuts. I'm going to throw this bit out and keep that bit. So of course the box that you might be working with will be totally different shape, different size, different colour. Oops, I didn't do a very good job of opening that up. Tore the card a bit. So I'm just taking all those flaps off. And you can make them whatever size. I like the teeny tiny size. Um, but you could absolutely make them bigger. Depends on the size of your stamps as well. Okay, so we're left with just the four sides. One of which is damaged. 
so I'm going to take that one off and I'll straighten up anything that needs straightened later oops I better not bury the stuff that I actually need to get to later on so now I am going to cut down this side and you can get like I said you can get quite a few from this so I'm just going to take this bit this bit I'm going to set aside because I don't think we're going to get through heaps today and this is easier when you're working with an existing fold but some of them you want to go and create a new fold off one of the panels oops just trying to get it to meet Right, hold that down and let's whoops that was a bit clingy wasn't it I've got this bit on the front of my desk that goes up and down because um, the desktop tilts and so when you've got it tilted you put put this metal bit up to stop things sliding off your desk never use it because I can't tilt my desk because I wouldn't be able to work with all my stuff on it it's an art desk rather than a craft desk but it it's okay for my purposes at the moment okay so we didn't quite get it meeting there so I'm just going to trim that off and it's just a scrappy wee book so it doesn't matter if it's like off a little bit okay so this is a different size to this one over here and you can have it this way or you can have it this way again depending how your stamps fit and some of these were slightly too tall, so I've angled them like so to fit them on the page. So do I want to cut it down? I think I'm going to leave it this size. So next step is to collage it up. And I'm choosing to collage this side, which for you would be like, say it's a cat food box, be the, the advertising on the outside of the box, the packaging. And then you have the inside all nice and clean and clear. So I'm just going to grab some scraps, which this is another great project for, is just using up some of those scraps because you're working with something small. So you only need small scraps. Okay, so I'm going to grab out my glue stick and just start gluing down some bits. So how are you all today? I hope you're having a great day today, my friends. I'm having an okay day. It's a bit cool. Got the fire going. It's supposed to get up to 18 degrees this afternoon, but I know that's not going to reach inside. Not today, anyway. I should trim the edges all at the end, but I just, yeah, I find myself doing it as I go quite often. Right, I've got no particular colour sort of theme going on or in my head. I'm just grabbing scraps. I've grabbed out, just get rid of that bent bit. I'm just going with a bunch of what I've pulled out beside me. That's okay there. I just don't want to glue all the way to the end there. Just gonna trim a bit off. Struggling to pick up things on this um, non slip matte surface. Kind of like to stick to it. So, this project we're doing a bit of collaging, we're doing a bit of stamping, we're doing just a little bit of book binding, and whether it's staples or three whole pamphlet stitch whatever you like multiple ways you can do this multiple sizes different styles and I think they're going to be super cute so I'm going to include one of these in my patreon mail for this month which I think will be fun to send them out to my mail tier patrons I'm just going to stick that down to my glue page Okay, 
one little corner up here kind of gone reasonably neutral on this will fit there nicely quite satisfying watching it come together so quickly just a fun little project Here we go. Now I like to leave that to dry before I refold it. So next stage we need our pages. So I'm going to grab my paper, my coffee dyed paper here. And I'm going to cut a strip that doesn't go from edge to edge. I want to bring it in on either edge just a little bit because by the time you stack the pages uh, it's going to push out in the middle and I'm not trimming them down because they're designed to remove anyway to use either to cut out or to untie the binding and use what's inside but if you're doing it as a little like um, inspirational booklet or motivational booklet or friendship booklet or whatever uh, and you don't want it to be taken apart then you might want to trim up the pages and stop them from pushing out in the middle it's entirely up to you okay so that's that way and then this way we want to do the same bringing it in at the top and bottom not because it's pushing out but just because I like that look I like a little bit of space around the edges so what have we got here we have uh six and a half centimeters one two three four five six yes six and a half centimeters so start at 12 go to 18 and a half that's just for my own information yours will be completely different just stops me having to remeasure everything because i can just oops i did not cut that very well let's see if we can go in again Oops, yep, we went offline, never mind. Just a little bit jaggedy there, it will be okay. Edges aren't super important because I'm anticipating the person will just cut out the image. Or even if they're doing a square cut, there's still plenty of room around the stamp stamped image to do that so the edges of the page is not super important in my thinking so I'm just using my grid to put it to the same marks on the grid and trimming up so I'm not having to just work it out every time or measure it or mark it on my paper Right, now I did have four pages in the other ones, and I think I want four pages again. So I'm going to take another, it's got bits of paper stuck to me now. So, which is the best way to cut this on my, I think that way. We're going to go 21 and a half, I think. I'm really enjoying this mat having the half centimetre marks on it. Because my other one, which is under this one, uh, didn't have the half centimetre marks. And I'm finding that particularly useful. And I've kind of got used to the all the lines. For a start, it really bugged me. It's like there's so many lines going on it's so busy but I think I'm used to it so I hope you are not finding it too busy and when you're watching the video I've had one person say they thought it was fine and it wasn't a problem for them um, but if you do have a problem do let now that doesn't look wide enough 
it's not okay I changed my direction of measurement didn't I okay so just have to do this one slightly differently and we're gonna go about there do it okay so we've got four pages I'm gonna fold them up hope I've made them the right size that would be embarrassing so and these I'm only stamping on one side because I'm envisaging of course that the other side's going to be glued down to something eventually uh, but if you were making a little booklet to remain intact then you can go ahead and decorate both sides it would look super cute this is paper I just coffee dyed over the weekend I spent all Saturday afternoon and a few hours on Sunday evening coffee dyeing paper I love the marking on this Side do I want maybe the less grungy side well one side will be grungier than the other because by the time I stamped on both sides so this one and this one right let's stack them all together just to see how they're looking if there's anything glaringly out that is offensive to the eye we can deal with it like that is too long don't know how I did that obviously that was the extra page I did so I'm just going to whip in and trim it up with my scissors here we go fixed okay this hopefully will be dry enough now I haven't bothered inking around the edges but you could absolutely ink if you want to but I'm choosing not to just quick little projects so you know everything like inking takes a little bit extra time cute it all fits okay stamping time so I'm going to do the same set of stamps and I am when I find where I put it over here <laughs> I'm going to stamp it in black you could also vary the colors depending what you're stamping um, so let's go with this cute little ink bottle that I put on the front of the other one. And just stamp away. Have some fun. I do love this set of stamps. I think they are super cute. And this one, I try and put like the ones that are similar, one on the front, one on the back, just to spread them out a little bit. So one there and then one here. So you're forming a little signature so the ones that are sort of similar, one will be at the front of the signature, one will be at the back. That's what I mean rather than stamping on the back if that makes sense okay with that one because there's two here that are very very similar so we'll do those next so this would be really cute with botanicals butterflies um, just depending what stamps you've got in your collection and if you don't have ones that kind of form a set then use whatever you've got make it eclectic just make it a little sampler or you could do one that's all word stamps i think that would actually be quite cool so you've got little words that you can tear out and put on a project all right so that one and then this one that is very very similar it's just got a different bottle top on it and the contents are slightly higher but it's the same same basic shape so we'll put it on the back page so that they're separated cute 
cute. And I find these come together relatively quickly. Uh, cutting down the cover is probably the, the most tedious part of it. Okay, so let's grow these cute some more squatter bottles. So yes, I am cleaning my stamps as I go. And then this one. And then just two more after this. This cute one with the little tie and um, like a little medallion on the front. It's very cute. They're all cute. Let's face it. <laughs> they are all cute. I just love little things. And these little bottle stamps just, oh, they're just adorable. They're only a cheap china set, you know. But I think they are cool. Okay, and the last one, I didn't actually check to see if this one fits sideways. It's quite a wide one. Just going to flatten that paper out a little bit. Maybe just to be safe, we'll put this one sideways. It does fit, but it might be harder to deal with because it goes too close to the spine so we'll just do it sideways and give it some room to to breathe don't want to crowd our stamps do we here we go all clean all stamped all popped back onto their plastic all right close that up stack things behind me and hope they don't fall down Okay, pop our little pages in. Now, I am choosing to do the three hole pamphlet stitch just because I think it's an extra level of cuteness. But I'm using an awl because we're going through, you know, a, a cardboard box, thin but still. Um, my problem is the awl does leave quite large holes, and I'm trying not to. Oops, but it just seems unavoidable. Oh, no matter how much I try, that one was better. But I'm trying not to press too hard. That was better. But once it goes through into the foam, it's like, whoo, suddenly we're away. And I'm just grabbing out one length. Oh, it's caught up. Well, I was grabbing one length, but I don't know whether that's one length or not, because it all got caught up there. Sorry, I'm just going to deal with this because it's annoying me. I grabbed the wrong thing. I don't know why they do this every now and then. Which one am I trying to... That one. They kind of get knotted. Oh. Don't fuss with it, just leave it alone. Deal with it later. I'm sure you don't all want to see me fuss around with undoing a knot in my embroidery coffins. Okay, for these I'm also choosing to sew them, uh, put the opening on the outside rather than the middle. Normally when I'm sewing a journal, I have the threads on the inside. But I thought it's just cute having the little bow on the outside. So I'm not going to look like walk through this process i've done quite a bit of sewing signatures on on camera and there's other videos you can watch for a walk through of that and most of you probably know oops what am i doing i don't want to put that back through the middle i'm so used to going back into the middle right so there we go it's gonna doesn't even need to be super tight 
do a knot I'm just going to do a single knot so that it can be hopefully undone if it doesn't come undone easily it can just be cut but I'm hoping that can be undone so that the person can use the bit of embroidery thread as well and I've got that uneven I don't mind just leave it as you know a fun little extra bit floppy cute now that's the front so to finish it off just going to open it out because it makes it a little bit easier to do I'm going to grab one of the stamps and this I think is really cool to put the same one of the stamps on the cover so you know what's inside it so if you make a bunch and you think oh I want to send that person a butterfly one and then you've got to open them up to see which one is a butterfly one if you put one of the stamps on the front you'll know what's inside might not work quite so well with an eclectic one but that's one way so I want to I think we'll go with this little stamp So I'm just going to stamp it straight onto the cover. Oops, the birds are upside down. Oh well, you're going to be covered over it anyway with our stamp here. Maybe we'll put you over to the spine. I don't think I've stamped it straight either. Yeah, it's okay. It's not bad. clean again okay and one last touch is I like to include a word just because you know it's a cover and I'm using my ver <coughs> excuse me vertical words <coughs> I'm so sorry vertical words plus kit uh, it's available on Etsy um, and I'm just looking for shorter words um, that's I'm not sure that's the word I wanted is short or what about this one loving here we go cool and I'm not even distressing the word either I'm just gluing it straight on quick easy fun little project that gives you something cute To use or to pop in a journal or send out in happy mail so pop it back together and then we have this fun little booklet of stamped images that we can use in projects so it's a great way to share because uh, everybody's got different stamp sets so another thought is you could do the whole page in a background stamp, like different background stamps. That would be super cool. Um, botanicals, all sorts. Really fun. Lots of different ways you could do it. Um, so we've got that one. We've got the first one that I made as a prototype, which opens up this way instead. And then I did have this cover ready, uh, which I haven't done the pages for but I might do butterflies or something in that one. Uh, it has got more of a vintage feel, so maybe I might go... I was thinking more bottles, but mm, no, I think I'd do something different, just because I don't want to stamp the same thing all the time. But I hope you really enjoy this project, my friends. I thought it was super cute and fun. And just, you know, just fun. Crafting should be about fun, shouldn't it? And a bonus that you have something little that you can send someone in happy mail. So there we go, friends. I will leave it there for the day. I hope you have a fantastic day. Uh, that your whole week is fantastic. I will be back tomorrow with another video. I hope to see you then. Take care. Bye.